Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. It is Wednesday and I'm going to take you on a journey through my day today. Let's go. First up, it's always tea. Morning tea, always. So for breakfast, I have been really loving this combination. Too good vanilla and love crunch granola, dark chocolate cinnamon and cashew, and some strawberries, and then don't be worded out, some sugar-free lime jello. You just have to trust me. So let's make this. Right, there is all of the goodness. Now we just mix it together and I promise it's delicious. It's delicious. And this is what the start of my morning looks like. Some breakfast, some tea, and a little bit of reading. Right now I'm currently reading one of the books in the Firefly Cozy Mystery series by London Levitt. I think I'm on book four. It totally reminds me of an adult version of Nancy Drew. And if you know, you know. Okay, so I am all ready for my day and I just realized I did not work on my to-do list, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But I'm also going to respond to some emails that have popped through and some notifications that I need to do something with, otherwise they're gonna drive me nuts. So let's get to that. My to-do list is set, and thankfully there's not a ton on it that I have to get done today, but I do have a running list for April, and I am such an old school human that uh, it's gotta be notebooks for me. It's just so much easier, although I do keep a lot of things digitally. I use a calendar that's digital, but I have not been able to break the habit of using actual notebooks to keep my notes in and also my to-do list in. I've tried a myriad of different journals and calendar systems and yep, I always come back to this old school method, which I'm really quite content with. So typically I have one notebook that is just to-do list. So if you were to flip through this one, it would be a running list of to-dos. And there are periods of time when I don't write in it and periods of time where I'm like, let's get my life back in order. So I have an April to-do list and then a daily to-do list when there's things that I can't forget to do. Most of the time it just stays up in my brain, but I sometimes forget things. Actually, a lot of times I forget things. So I need help with writing it down. So that is what I have done. Also today is podcast day, so I'm recording this on a Wednesday, and I actually podcasted about being realistic in business and what that actually means. 
Okay, so I had to uh, take that call. Actually, I went to voicemail and I tried calling the caller back, but uh, somehow, I don't know, she didn't have her voicemail set up or whatever. But in the process of doing all of that, I just got a new Inner Circle member and I'm so excited. Katie, welcome to the Inner Circle membership. And I don't know if you watch my YouTube channel, but I'm excited that you're gonna be a part of it. And I'm totally giving you a shout out on this YouTube episode because my Inner Circle membership means a lot to me. It's for my fellow business unicorns who are procrastinators like me, who are also unconventional like me, and who consider themselves round pegs in square holes. They just don't align. So I'm excited because my Inner Circle membership is open for enrollment right now through April 15th and I'm getting some really great humans coming in during enrollment time. So that's exciting. So as I was saying, today is podcast day and podcast day is Wednesdays with my podcast, Boss Girl Creative. And I've been doing this podcast for nearly six years. It will be six years in July of this year. And this is 2021. And I just celebrated my 300th episode not too long ago. We are actually at episode 304 today. Today's podcast day. So episode 304 is all about being realistic in business. And this episode stemmed from the recent Rachel Hollis incident. And I was talking to my Inner Circle member community last night. We do a monthly Q&A. And I was saying we can't Rachel Hollis ourselves, which I have now termed a verb, evidently. And if you aren't familiar with the most recent Rachel Hollis incident, so Rachel Hollis is a influencer author. She's all about women empowerment. So she claims... She's written several books. The most notable is Girl, Wash Your Face. And then she came out with Girl, Stab Apologizing and then didn't see that coming, which I believe is related to her divorce that recently happened. And she recently took to her TikTok. Y'all, I can't keep up. TikTok, Snapchat, like I'm, I'm just not there. I have a Snapchat. I haven't even logged in in years. So evidently she had a rant on her TikTok that was related to her entitlement and her privilege. She's been called out before about it. And I'm not gonna wax poetic about the actual incident. You can go Google her. You can go learn all about it uh, by going over to my friend Rachel K. Albers Instagram and start with free 46. It's part of her free business school that she does on her Instagram stories every day or every few days. So start with free 46 and then follow that along and you will get a really great dose of what is going on with the Rachel Hollis incident. It now is spanning to Marie Forleo and Amy Porterfield and Jenna Kutcher and Laura Belgray, who is known as the Talking Shrimp. These are all women that are in the female entrepreneurship space and who are considered kind of up there, kind of big. And it's, it's wild. So it got me thinking, how do we vet the people that we spend hours consuming their content? And how do we now readjust our measuring stick? Because this isn't, this isn't normal. And it's really showing ego, entitlement, privilege for sure. And when you're in the space of female empowerment and then you actually act a different way that completely goes against the grain of everything you're teaching, it's quite eye-opening. And how the others are responding is also quite eye-opening, which is what prompted me to get behind the microphone this week and talk about the Rachel Hollis incident and being realistic in business and what that actually means and how we can redefine our measuring stick with the mentors and the people that we consume their content that we're trying to learn from. Now, I haven't read any of Rachel Hollis's books. I've not actually been a fan of hers and I've consumed a little bit of Jenna Kutcher's content, but not a whole lot because I 
there were some things that she did a few years ago that I wasn't in agreement with. And so I, I just, I don't support her, which is totally okay. Uh, but I have supported Marie Forleo. I've been in her B school back in 2015. If you've been a listener of my podcast for any length of time, you've heard me mention my experience of B school. And I've also been an avid consumer of Amy Porterfield's podcast, Online Marketing Made Easy. But all of that to say is none of that's realistic. Going through B school, it gave me some more tools and resources to put in my own arsenal and helped me get focus and clarity to create Boss World Creative. But I haven't seen the success that they talk about. And Amy Porterfield, same thing. She's now putting out ads that say, hey, click here. I'm gonna teach you the one secret that has helped me in my eight figure business and or help me to create my eight figure business. And then like, that's not realistic either. And when did we jump from six figures to eight figures? That's mind boggling. So anyways, today's podcast episode is about being realistic in business. You can go find my show on your favorite podcast listening device, which is all over the place. You can tell Amazon uh, Alexa to go play the show. She just lit up. She's sitting right next to me. And you can say, play boss girl, and she will play my show if you have an Alexa enabled device. And you can find my show through Pandora and Spotify, iHeartRadio. Most recently, I got launched on a Samsung free platform and all of the major podcast listening platforms you can find my show in. So if you are a fellow boss girl and whether or not you have a full-time job and you're hustling something on the side or you have your own business and consider yourself a an entrepreneur then definitely go check out my show so today is podcast day and now it's time to go get my stuff together so that we can move onwards and tackle the to-do list okay so it's 2 42 and i got hung up at home, it took me a little bit longer to get out and about to get these errands taken care of, but I just came to the bank to do what I needed to do at the bank, and now I'm heading over to the shipping center. My husband had me get something out of the garage that's being shipped out, and we have a shipping company that's local, do all the packaging and everything, and then we send it through our eBay account. So that's where I'm heading to next. And then I'm going to get some food because I'm hungry and it's almost three o'clock and I haven't had anything since breakfast. And then I'm going to open this box up that came in yesterday evening. I'm excited to show you what is inside that box, but we're going to wait till we get over to the warehouse to do any unboxing. And it's got this fun little lock, which means it, I think that means it came from overseas but anyways we're gonna find out what's in there together actually you're gonna find out what's in there because I already know what's in there but that will be exciting regardless because I will finally get to see them in person oh I'm excited to uh, show off what is in this box do a little unboxing here and I'm really pumped because as I mentioned before I know what's in here but you don't know what's in here so I'm excited to see it in person and to get photos of it and of course it says do not use blades to open so how are you supposed to open it if you're not using a blade So we will be very careful. Time for the moment of truth of removing of removing the packing. Just 
see the beauty that is inside. Which are these really beautiful natural weave charters with a fringe. So let's show you. Look how pretty. Oh my goodness. These are amazing. They are amazing. All right, let's go see how this looks. It has been a day and it doesn't seem like it's over yet, which is, it's okay. But now I'm gonna go play in the dirt, quite literally, and I'm gonna show you why. This is why I'm gonna play in the dirt because I am planting my own pampas grass. So I got these two guys in the ground, this one and this one, two days ago. And of course, it's like wind blown season over here. And I have four more guys that are completely wind blown. Oh, bless their hearts. They got to get in the ground soon. The wind is just terrible. And they got to get more water because the wind is legitimately drying them out. So I'm going to get at least two of them in the ground and hope that I can get all four of them in the ground. That's probably wishful thinking, but I'm going to put one right here at this pole, another one in the middle, one at that pole over there, and then none of the, another one in the middle. So one, two, three, four. So yeah, let's get to uh, putting these guys in the ground so that they can start growing some roots and holding on for dear life. Eventually I have plans to bring in some Oklahoma River Rock to put down here and bring in some more desert type plants to put alongside the building and to kind of hide this random AC and our plumbing, clean out pipes and stuff and pampas all the way down to the corner just for some nice looking landscaping except, you know, except for what it looks like right now, or instead, instead of what it looks like right now. So onwards we go. Let's get some pampas in the ground. Now this is challenging because there's rock that I have to get through first, but I think the closer I get, I might start at this one. Let's see, one, two, three. I might start back here and then go forward because I might be more successful. There's not a whole lot of rock right here, I don't think. I guess we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out, so let's find out together.
All right, real talk. That was a... <sighs> that was nuts. The ground is so compacted. That was so much more intense than the first two combined. But it's in the ground. Let me show you. All right, pampas grass number three is in the ground. Hopefully it roots sooner rather than later so that it can maintain a sort of upright position. But, but you know, after seeing these guys in the ground for a couple of days, they're going to have to get some mental toughness in their root system. Because this wind is no joke. No joke. The other day, well, it's been a couple of weeks. I'm going to walk over here. It's been a few weeks, but we had some really, really powerful straight line winds that lifted my big container, the big one behind the little one, just took it off its posts that it's resting on and shoved it into my fence. And I'm still kind of scared about what my chairs look like inside. Just a little scared. So I haven't opened it up. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they're okay. I should probably rip the band-aid off and uh, take a peek, but you can see the line of how far over it came off its posts. That straight line right there and my fence, we've already fixed it. But you can see if I walk down here, You can see where it stopped. Basically this pole right here is what prevented it from going any further. It's pretty nuts. In the process of re-stabilizing it, we pulled out a dead possum. Oh my goodness, it was terrible. <laughs> That's another video for another time. All right, so I managed to get two in. So the one I showed you earlier, and then a second one. Thanks to my husband, because I was having a heck of a time getting the ground to break up. So here is the new guy in the ground. And that one's already perked up, which is really, really exciting to already see. So hopefully this guy does as well like these guys so now i just have two more to do which is exciting and then eventually more but for now that will work all right so i am going to call it a day and until next time i hope you will consider subscribing to the house of sugar creek and liking this video and sharing it with your friends who you think might enjoy my channel and turn on those notifications I would be so incredibly grateful for that. All right, friends, until next time, I hope you have a great weekend.